Welcome, everyone. And just in case you're worried you didn't fall into some sort of time loop or wormhole, it is not December 24th. It's January. But our Christmas Eve service was moved entirely on Zoom, which meant we lost all the good music that we produce for each other. And so we're having a do over this morning. Yeah, so I invite you to lean into your Christmas spirit if you still have a little bit left over. And as Unitarian Universalists, we are a tradition that looks at closely at traditions and see what works for us and what doesn't and carry forward what we need. So moving Christmas because the weather was bad kind of feels in keeping with our theological and religious heritage, we are making it work, adjusting to modern times or modern weather and moving forward together. So we begin with some words from Quinn Caldwell. If you came to this place expecting a tame story, you came to the wrong place. If you came for a story that does not threaten you, you came for a different story than the one we tell. If you came to hear of the coming of a God who only showed up so that you could have a nice day with your loved ones, then you came for a God whom we do not worship here. For even a regular baby is not a tame thing. And goodness that cannot threaten complacency and evil is not much good at all. And a God who would choose to give up power and invincibility to become an infant certainly didn't do it just so you could have dinner. 
but if you came because you think that unwed teenage mothers are some of the strongest people in the world, if you came because you think that the kind of people who work third shift doing things you'd rather not do might attract an angel's attention before you snoring comfortably in your bed would, if you came because you think that there are wise people to be found among undocumented travels from far lands and that they might be able to show you God, if you came to hear a story of tyrants trembling while heaven comes to peasants, if you came because you believe that God loves the animals so much, as much as the people, and so made them the first witnesses to the saving of the world. If you came for a story of reversals that might end up reversing you, if you came for a tale of adventure and bravery where strong and gentle people win and the powerful and violent go down to dust, where the rich lose their money but find their lives, and the poor are raised up like kings. If you came to be reminded that God loves you too much to leave you unchanged, if you came to follow the light even if it blinds you, if you came for salvation and not safety, then you are in the right place. Mm. This morning's words of welcome come from Linda Hart. The travelers had come a long way and had a long way yet to go. Unable to come off the donkey without her husband's assistance and the grace of a large stone, still she came down, one hand to her back, feeling the ache throughout her body. The child in her belly kicked and made her draw a quick breath. Leaning heavily on Joseph's arm, Mary picked her way along the path. Others on the road had told them that here they might find a spring with water so cold it would hurt their teeth. Here they might find a place of shelter and calm where they could bed down for the night. Here we come too to find a moment of refreshment and rest from our journeys. No matter where you are going on your journey, no matter if it is your choice to go or if you left by faraway edict, no matter if you carry a burden or the deepest of joys, no matter how weary or thirsty you may be, pause here, take a quiet breath, rest in peacefulness, be renewed and restored. For in a short while, the journey will continue with its worries and troubles and joys and promise. Until then, let us join together minds and hearts and worship. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to People's Church. Whether this is your first time at People's Church or you're here every Sunday or anywhere in between, I welcome you. My name is Laura McClellan, and I'm from the Sunday Services Committee. People's Church is a mem member congregation of the Unitarian Universalist Association and part of a tradition of liberal religion. Here, our mission is to serve, is to be a beloved community, embracing and serving our diverse world. Welcome. As we begin, I have a few announcements. So our, our school-age children today have specialty classes that they're welcome to attend, or they can be in here for Christmas Eve service. And if you're doing the specialty class, the when we sing you out, please go to room nine, which is kind of immediately back there, also known as the Buddha room. 
because it has a big Buddha statue in it. Uh, if you are staying in here, please make sure you have a candle, either battery operated or real for our candle lighting at the end of the service. The church auction is coming again. It's back this year for the first year in a while. It will happen in February. And now it's time to start thinking about what you might have to offer. So we look for goods, we look for services, we look for experiences. If you are good at hosting a party, if you have a skill that other people pay for, if you have a beautiful object of some sort that you think others would like, please offer it up. In the past, we've had all kinds of wonderful things. I personally always love it when people put babysitting in the church auction, hint, hint, if you're willing to do that. But there's dinner parties, there's boat trips. We've had you know, haircuts and manual labor and all kinds of things. So if you have a skill, the chances are someone else would pay for it. And please think about contributing it. The forms will be out soon. The next also related to fundraising pitch is our stewardship campaign is coming up in about two months and we're still looking for a few folks to be part of the that effort. So if you like thinking about inspiring messages to encourage people to give money, if you like looking at spreadsheets, if you like are interested in giving a testimonial about why the church matters, if you have some time to stuff some envelopes, all of those sorts of tasks are what we're looking for over the next couple months. So let me know. And finally, um, tomorrow or tomorrow, next Saturday afternoon from two to five, we are having a game day for the young adults in our congregation. So if you are between 18 and 35, please come bring a snack, bring a board game. We also will have snacks and board games. We gather in room 19, which is the room at the top of the stairs. Okay, now we get to sing.
I'd like to call Charlie Lacey up to light the chalice. Fellow Sojourners by Dan Lambert. How did that happen? We gather together on this Christmas Eve as fellow sojourners looking for light, for hope, for peace, and for love. We gather as people from many backgrounds, many faiths, many cultures, and many spiritual paths. But as we light this chalice, we gather as one body looking to the nativity for its message to all of humanity. Its message is that there is light, there is hope, there is peace, there is love. Thank you. 
In addition to our chalice lit here at People's Church, those joining with us on Zoom this morning have lit chalices on Munson Lake near Grand Junction, on 41 and a half Street, on Grand Prairie, in Burke Acres, on West Main Hill, and on Dartmouth Street. I'm so glad we are able to be together in person and in spirit. Now I'd like to invite our children forward for a celebration. Yeah, feel free to sit on the steps. Oh my goodness, I'm so glad you all are here today. Oh, be very careful about being up so high, okay? Okay, so about a month ago in one of our specialty classes, there was gingerbread house making. Did any of you participate in that? Yep, our participants were Donovan, Kaya, Teddy, Valen, Xander, Hazel, Charlie, Millie, and Lexi. And did you know that we entered those gingerbread houses in a contest? Yeah. Yeah, it was a contest that was put on by Community Homeworks, who helps people have real life houses that are safe and warm in the winter, not gingerbread houses. Although I know at least one of you went home and told your parents that you made a gingerbread house for homeless people and they were very confused, those grownups. And that's fine. And this is here. And then there was voting and judging and all kinds of things. And do you know what happened? We won, it. we won a trophy. And so Chris is here, I know. Thank you, kids. And, and thank you to everyone who voted. I know my mom and dad both voted from Washington State. If anybody else voted from far away, we're grateful to you. And look at this. I, I think this is maybe the first trophy that People's Church has ever won. We have plaques, we have other things, but this is a trophy. You have a question, Grace? I know, but isn't it the cutest trophy you've ever seen? Look at this. I think it's gonna stay at the church because that seems like the fairest option, but we maybe can, if do you want a picture of it to take home for you since you helped win it? No, okay. We can maybe figure out some sharing arrangements. Oh my gosh, it looks like it's made of real gingerbread. It does look like it's made of real gingerbread. It even feels like it too. So thank you to everybody who helped raise awareness about this good organization that the grown-ups are going to be hearing more about in a little while. Mm. And now it is time for us to sing you to your classes. So that means almost everybody is going to room nine to do specialty classes and preschool is going to their classroom. Go for it then. Come with love to guide you on your way and may the joy of life surround you wherever you may go. Go forth in peace in search of wisdom with love to guide you on your way and may the joy of life surround you wherever you may go. From the Gospel of Matthew, as written in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be pregnant from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to divorce her quietly. 
But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall become pregnant and give birth to a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had given birth to a son, and he named him Jesus. In the time of Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. If you'll please rise and body your spirit, we'll sing together.
The Christmas Story by Robin Richstone. We know by heart these stories of a cold world unwelcoming in the murderous tyrant, Mary on a donkey, escape. How cruel, how long ago, how far from what we mean to sing. O come, O come, to the weary, the terrified. Mary's heart beating fast, her grip on the baby. The strains of it fill the shops, the streets flow down rivers, cross seas, cross borders. The refugee mother kneels to change her infant in an open field. The shepherd's gone, the angel's quiet. Her safety now completely up to us. The world was a desert for their love. Church and state had joined forces to make sure it wouldn't even sprout. But God is stronger than the desert. So Mildred Jeter, who was black, and Richard Loving, who was white, fell in love, even though they lived in 1960s Virginia. And when they discovered they were pregnant, they decided to get married against all the anti-race mixing laws of convention and the state in that time and place. Eventually, what they did led to a US Supreme Court decision that struck down laws against interracial marriage throughout the country. The Lovings may not have quite done things in the conventional order, but God made love flower in the desert. The world was a desert for their love. Church and state had joined forces to make sure it wouldn't even sprout. But God is stronger than the desert. So same-sex couples fell in love anyway, had children anyway, 
And if they were lucky to be part of a religious community that loves them as much as they love each other, they got married anyway. And now in our country, such marriages are legal and the flowers are overwhelming the desert. The world should have been a desert for them too. She was young and pregnant by an unknown party. This apparent betrayal should have withered their love to the roots, but God is stronger than that. And so were Mary and Joseph. So they were married anyway, and life overwhelmed the world. Once light-skinned and dark-skinned people getting together was unthinkable. Now we've had a president of the United States who was a product of such a family. Once gay and lesbian people having children together boggled the mind. And now we figure out who should hold the baby while they're exchanging rings. Once an illegitimate kid from Nazareth saving the world would have been laughable. But you know what happens then. With love, the desert never wins, especially not the desert that we create for other people. Love wins. Life wins. So go bring something to life today. The Virgin Monologue by Jim Burklow. God did it isn't an explanation, said Joseph. <laughs> he got no account for the baby's chromosomes, no description of the mechanism that transmuted the divine shadow into royal blood. The devil made me do it would have sounded better to me, said Joseph though it never did him any good when he said it to his old girlfriends. 
It was a mystery to him what moved him to listen for the rhyme and puzzle for the reason that Mary gave him the news in the manner that she did. A mystery that put him at peace. There was something in the way she held his hand that no medical journal article could correlate. Something in the way she gazed into his eyes that eluded the grasp of genomic research. I don't ask you to believe what I'm saying, she said. I don't ask you to take my word for it. I just ask you to love as if. Love me as if I were yours. Love this baby as if he were yours. As I love you as if you were mine. Love as if makes every child divine. Love as if fits all in David's line. Love as if this love was meant for you. Love as if the Christmas tale is true. I invite you to rise and body your spirit as we sing once again. Night Visions by Jan Richardson. Wise women also came, the fire burned in their wombs. Long before they saw the flaming star, they walked in shadows, trusting the path would open under the light of the moon. Wise women also came seeking no directions no permissions from any king. They came by their own authority, their own desire, their own longing. They came in quiet, spreading no rumors, sparking no fear to lead to innocent slaughter, 
to their sister Rachel's inconsolable lamentations. Wise women also came and they brought useful gifts, water for labor's washing, <laughs> fire for illumination, a blanket for swaddling. Wise women also came, at least three of them, holding Mary in her labor, crying out with her in the birth pangs, breathing ancient blessings into her ear. Wise women also came, and they went as wise women always do, home a different way. In this and every season, may we see them, the wise ones who come bearing their gifts for us. They cloak themselves in garb that rarely draws attention, but they are there at the edge of the shadows, in the margins of our days, on the threshold of our awareness, offering what we most need. Give us eyes to see them before they have left to go home some other way, before we glimpse their departing shadows edged in gold and smell their spiced perfume lingering behind them in the air. People's people are generous people. And one of the ways that we are generous is once a month, we send our offering out into the world to do good and important work in our community. So I'd like to tell you that I had this all planned out, that we are offering, our offering today supports the maternal and infant health pro pilot project at Community Homeworks. And it is so perfect that on this day, when we are telling and retelling the story of a young family who did not have a safe place to live, we are raising money to make sure that story is not repeated in our community. That wasn't the original plan. The rescheduling made this happen. But let's pretend that it's all, we were all planning it exactly this way. And so Chris Pradell, the executive director of Community Homeworks, is here to tell us a little bit about their work. And I invite you all to please be generous. Uh, good morning, party people. Uh, I see the celebration continuing through January 8th here, so that's great. We, we missed our uh, Christmas Eve service as well, so it's really wonderful for uh, myself and my family to be here with you today to, to celebrate uh, into January. Again, uh, thank you to Reverend Lomberg, uh, who has volunteered with Community Homeworks this past year. And I uh, just want to really thank uh, uh, the congregation for uh, allowing us to come here and speak to you today. So Community Homeworks, we're a small local nonprofit based here in the city of Kalamazoo, was founded 14 years ago. And our founders were AmeriCorps volunteers for Habitat for Humanity. And they were finishing up a home and they realized and saw a family that was uh, leaving it and had to leave a home right next door to them that was condemned because of a simple flooding issue in their basement. And they thought to themselves, you know, this seems really kind of messed up that we're building a brand new house right next to a beautiful old historic home that is condemned. And so they founded this organization, Community Homeworks, and the idea is that we exist for two purposes. We provide health and safety home repairs for homeowners to help keep them in their homes. And we also provide empowering education to help empower homeowners if they want to learn themselves to fix something or maintain something in their home that will work with them so they can learn how to do it themselves. So uh, this grant that, uh, that uh, we shared about we started this grant because we started to recognize there were situations where uh, a, parent, a single parent with three or four children would call us in January. And we depend on a lot of federal uh, grants to support, support people with this work. And sometimes it can take upwards of two to three weeks to get them uh, through the paperwork so that they can apply for the federal funding. Well, if you're a single parent with kids in your home and your furnace goes out in the middle of January, what do you do? Where do you go? You don't have two or three weeks to wait uh, to get through paperwork. And so we as an organization and our team couldn't live with that. 
So we piloted a program in, in collaboration with Cradle Kalamazoo and YWCA, where effectively we created a pilot grant so that if any uh, household that has an expectant parent or expectant individual or a newborn baby or small children in the home, it enables us to get into that home immediately so they don't have to wait. Let me share a couple examples of how this, the first week we used this grant, we received a call from a family through 211. The family uh, reached out to us and said, we didn't know that you had existed, but we haven't had electricity for two weeks. They had a newborn baby that was less than a week old in the house with no electricity during the most hot and humid weeks uh, in the sum this last summer. And to the point that the baby was almost getting dehydrated. Within two days, we had all the electricity restored and fixed in their home. Uh, another example, we had uh, another call from a family where uh, a baby had been in the NICU for almost two thirds of a year. You can imagine this family is so excited to finally bring baby home after that long journey in the hospital. The first day they get home, the furnace goes out. And one of the first cold spells of the year. Our team was there that day. And not only did we realize that not only were we able to fix their furnace, but we also realized that while the baby was on a feeding tube and breathing tubes, that there were electrical and plumbing issues that were concerning the home as well. We took care of those. That would not have been possible with federal funding requirements and applications. And so this grant enabled us to help that family almost instantaneously. So we are, are doing our best to, to balloon this fund in our community to try to make sure that no expectant parent and no small child or no child has to live in a conditions that make it so that they can't safely or, or help be healthy in their home. Uh, so thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. If you'd like to learn more about Community Homeworks, you can go to communityhomeworks.org. Um, I also left uh, some pens in the back as well with our name on it as well, if you just needed a reminder and uh, really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Thank you. Hello, yeah, good morning. <laughs> Just a couple of things real quick. Um, this song uh, that I'm gonna sing, uh, it's called Christmas Star. Uh, the words are in your program and where it's bold, feel free to sing along. Um, I wrote this song about a year ago. Um, I wanna thank uh, Reverend Rachel for inviting me to sing it this morning. And also I'm gonna be singing that karaoke style and the, uh, the voices at the end, you'll hear on the recording are three of my grandnieces, their ages like eight and nine. <laughs> so um, I want to give a shout out to them, Lena, Allegra, and Jovi. So it's called Christmas Star. <laughs>
please join me in giving thanks for all that sustains us. From the countless gifts we each have been given, gifts of life and love and sustenance, we bring these small portions to share in the works of love, which none of us can accomplish alone. In this season of holidays and holy days, many of us gather to share traditional rituals that reconnect us with community and mark important moments in our lives. Holidays at this time of year from Kwanzaa and Christmas, Hanukkah, Solstice and the New Year. These celebrations and more connect us to our history, our ancestors, inspire us with hope for what is possible, and remind us of the passage of time and tradition over generations. This season is a time of both joy and sorrow. Memories of loved ones and loss can be especially present in these days. The feeling of forced cheer can also have the opposite effect. And let's just be honest that we come to the close of another year marked by loss, pandemic, war, and violence, and with so much still on the line from our human rights to our planet. When I remember my growing up, I remember one of my favorite rituals growing up as a UU in a family that celebrated Christmas. It's the singing of carols. And my favorite Christmas carol is It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, written by Unitarian minister Edmund Hamilton Sears. The song imagines a chorus of angels hovering over the earth, always singing to a weary world, peace on the earth to all goodwill. But we, humanity, we never hear the song through the sounds of war and strife and thousands of years of wrong. But the hymn ends imagining the day when humanity will stop our acts of war and wrong. And then finally, in the stillness, we will hear the song. And then we together will join our voices to sing back peace on the earth to all goodwill. For me, this song captures the essence of beauty and peace that is possible and that is always present if we just tune our hearts to listen. That rather than perfecting the world or ourselves, recognizing that there is peace and goodwill already among us, waiting to be revealed if we would just listen. And this holiday season invites us to be present and attuned to the blessings and wonders of life around us, to family and friends and community, to the sun and the moon, to the trees and the animals, to the rivers and the mountains and the seas, to all the beauty of this earth, and the goodness and compassion that is present in the human heart. May we all make time in this season to pause, to listen, to nurture love and care for ourselves and each other, and to find joy in the many gifts we already have, and peace in moments wherever we can find them. Happy holidays to you all to each and every one of you. May you know you are loved and held in the arms of peace and light. Blessings to you all and happy holidays, happy holy days.
Christmas Eve at the Epsom Circle McDonald's by Marin C. Tirabasi. The kids with the Santa hats are said, selling hamburgers more cheerfully because they feel the season and are glad for an early closing. A boyfriend comes in and hangs over the counter, pressing against tattered garland looped to the finger level of children. A family with three toddlers, jazzy with excitement, are traveling to Maine in the drizzle of the holy evening. The littlest boy in red and green plaid Oshkosh runs in circles, strangling French fries in his hand. Tired of the car and already eager for presents and bed, his little sneakers tramp like angel feet. An older couple in a corner talk quietly about their daughter, who's been dead four Christmases now. They could have gone to their son-in-law's house. His kind new wife invited them with her family, but it didn't seem right. And this was the very brightest place. It looked like a star when they drove down the highway. And they knew there would be children here. A divorced dad with Budweiser on a black t-shirt jokes with his six-year-old daughter over milkshakes. A clumsily wrapped present perches on the molded plastic seat. He's trying to make the very best treat he can out of their Christmas hour before bringing her back to her mom's house. Brown eyes shine at him and he thinks she's excited for later, for Santa and all but she's looking at him all over, memorizing the gift. The preacher is on her way to church to remember Bethlehem out loud for the folks who come to break bread and light candles with paper circles on them to keep the wax from dripping on their hands as they sing Silent Night. Most of them have heard the story about the child before, and so has she. She has come here first, just to sit for a while and watch the Christmas Eve communion. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Let your heart be light. From now on, our troubles will be out of sight. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. Make the Yuletide gay. From now on, our troubles will be miles away. Here we are, as in olden days, happy golden days of yore. Faithful friends who to us, gather near to us once more. Through the years we all will be together, if the fates allow, hang a shining star upon the highest bar.
Millwork of Christmas by Howard Thurman. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. Merry Christmas again, everyone. I'm so glad we did this. And blow out your candles before you start moving, okay?